Today's episode is brought to you by Domain.com. And this is like our big VFX piece. There's, oh, most of the shots have some kind of visual effects in it. So Stark's acting as visual effects supervisor to make sure we're getting what we need so we can actually accomplish what we want to accomplish in post. Um, so like, what do you think are the main things that you're, you're thinking about? Like when we get the wide and you see the UFO and Josh in it, like what's your main consideration there? Uh, that the shaft is wide enough. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were gonna laugh. There's no other way to say it. Welcome to Film Riot's Epic Summer. Today we're jumping into post-production. Again, if you have not seen our latest short film, go here to watch it before we get all spoilerific. Of course, the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in all my footage, which I have on two hard drives that I was offloading to during production. Both drives are the exact same thing as well. One is just a backup in case anything happens to the other, which more than likely, nothing will happen to either drive unless you don't back up that drive and then it will crash because the universe hates you. So always, always, always have a backup of your work. The hard drives I use for this one are the Seagate Expansion USB 3.0 drives, which I don't usually use Seagate, but these were suggested to me, so I figured I'd give them a shot. All this, of course, is running into my HP Z820 workstation, which I switched over from Mac to PC as my main workstation a little over a year ago. Max just weren't practical for me anymore with price and scalability, so I made the leap, which was an easy one since once I'm in my software, the difference is really minimal. I do still have a Mac laptop for personal use, but my professional work is almost exclusively on my HP now. But inside my editor, which for me is Adobe Premiere CC, the 2014 version just makes my heart happy, especially when it comes to some color grading, which we will talk about on another episode. But I'll bring in all my footage and organize creating my footage folder, then inside that a day one and day two folder, then I will create even further folders inside those to organize even more, like a table, shelf, fridge, and so on. For super short deadline stuff like Film Riot, I never do this, but for something like this with a lot of clips and takes, I like to organize everything first so that I can move faster when I'm editing. But once I have my project set up how I want, I start my edit. First by grabbing takes that I like, so take this opening shot for instance, I went through all eight takes and picked the three that ended up working the most, both technically and performance-wise. I'll put those on my timeline and watch them side by side to narrow it down to the one I want to go with. With this one, it was between two. I like the movement and performance of this first one better, but the final drink moment and get up better in this one, so I used the shot of him hitting the space bar as a way to be able to cut to that last bit that I like better. And you probably notice that at the beginning of the shot here, there aren't any markings on the map, whereas in the finished shot, it looked like this. First, Stark took a blank sheet of paper and drew the triangle, and in another area, he wrote out the sentence and drew the arrow. This way, we're working with a much more organic looking writing and drawing. Then we scanned those to get them into the computer, brought them into Adobe After Effects, and assembled them into the areas that we wanted cutting out the versions that we decided on, pre-comping those together, and place them into a blending mode to match. Then we open up Mocha Pro to track the shot, which is my personal favorite tracker, just create an X-spline around the area, then track forward, and Mocha does its magic. Now we export from Mocha as corner pin data, so it will bend our layer as needed, then apply that data to our pre-comp layer. Then we keyframe the camera blur as the area of the shot goes out of focus, and there we go. And we have it in a pre-comp, so we can jump into that and make small changes to those text and drawing layers without having to redo everything. Editing the cabin scene was pretty straightforward with how much I had to trim down the shots. I was pretty much locked to the decisions that I made on the day. So it was just a matter of finding a pace that felt right. One thing that I ended up changing was this here. That was my original cut of that moment. I loved the can falling over, and I did like that we more clearly showed that he was kneeling down to a mini fridge, but after a few friends gave me the same note, that moment feeling a little too long, I trimmed it to this. Which I definitely think they were right. Cutting that fat out and just jumping right to what matters, felt much better. Then we have Josh jumping up and spinning around, and we use the edit to follow his experience of what's happening. He looks, then we look. The camera pans, then we jump cut to a move on the TV. The idea here is that we're focusing in much more, almost as if we're snapping out of his POV and more now into what he's hearing. <laughs> And that shot originally looked like this. We threw our tracking pattern on the screen, which we desaturated from our usual green. That way we would have a glow that would be something that was helping us sell the effect, not a green that we would have to deal with later in post. In post, I grabbed a bunch of old public domain footage from internetarchive.org and combined that with a speech from JFK. 
The idea here is that we sent these signals into space years ago, and now the aliens are pumping that back to him as a message of peace. I cut this together and handed it off to start. Once again, start track the screen using Mocha, same as before, then copied that corner pin data again and applied that to the screen footage I gave him. After that, he added a slight color correction, blurred the edges a bit, and then added a glow and done. Super simple, but now a quick break and then we get back to some post loving. If you are an innovator, an inventor, or a business person of any kind, Domain.com is the place to go for your next great idea. They have domain extensions, a list of like 200 plus and growing, like .expert, .ninja, .cc, .nyc, and a ton of others to help you really dial in on your brand. And we can save you money by using the coupon code FILMRIOT. At checkout, you get 20% off your email, web hosting, and domain names. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. So for this shot, we just had someone off frame shaking the crap out of the shelf, but we still had to have that picture frame fall off on cue. So we taped Thin Magician's line on the top of the frame, but with the light how it is, you still end up seeing it in the shot. And since this was such a simple shot with only a few frames showing the string, I just duplicated that layer in After Effects, offset the bottom layer a frame or two, masked around the string, keyframing the mask to move with it. In a frame or two, I had to reposition the bottom layer, but that's it. The string is gone and it only took five minutes. The rest of the cabin scene plays out almost in another one-er with this move to the door landing on his hand. But this shot right here originally looked like this. We were able to get the look most of the way there in camera, but with that missing HMI that we talked about in our first episode, we weren't able to get it all the way, but we knew we were gonna be able to push it the rest of the way in post. Inside After Effects, again, Stark created a solid, then masked around the window to create a mat for that window, keyframing to follow until we had a solid mat for the window across the shot. Then he applied shine to that layer and tweaked the settings to match the natural light that was coming through the windows. Next, he keyframed shine's center location to follow the lights outside so the source wouldn't be bouncing around unnaturally in the shot. And finally, keyframe the light's intensity to kick on with the actual lights in the scene, and that's it. What I love about these effects is that none of them are very difficult to pull off, but all of them are extremely important to the film. Well, that's it for today. Next week, we're jumping into VFX part two, moving into some more complicated shots. Again, if you want to connect to any of the filmmakers involved, it's all in the notes section below, including links to where you can find the poster, soundtrack, and our onset experience for the film. Also, if you're looking to get some mocha goodness, I asked them if they'd be cool enough to hook you guys up with a coupon code, and they did. So you can use this coupon code right here, FilmRiot15, to get 15% off BCC or Mocha Pro. Links to that in the notes section as well. But that is it, and I'll see you guys next week.